Honestly, this gentleman pains me. It's been three days now that I see him very often before going to work. Looks like he didn't have a place to rest. Hello sir, I hope you are well. Not very well sir. I am very bad. You know I arrived in this country a few days ago because of the war in my country. Currently, I have nothing to eat and I don't even know where to sleep. You are the first person to come approach me and talk to me because since my arrival, no one has yet come to see me. Oh. Alright. I completely understand what you must be feeling. You know what, right now I have nothing on me and I'm off to work like that. If you could wait a little, by tonight or tomorrow I will bring you some groceries and some cash. I hope this helps you out a little. Oh thank you very much in advance. That would make me so happy. You're welcome sir. Come on, see you later. Yes, see you later. Lord helped him, so that nothing bad can happen to him in the meantime. I wish I could help him. Because his story touched me a lot. I was very touched by your story last time, that's why I came back to bring you provisions and money. Oh thank you very much madam, may heaven bless you. You're welcome, sir, make good use of the money I just gave you. Don't worry, ma'am. Alright. See you later. Yes, see you later. Great, she fell into the trap. From today, it's over for you. You will have a miscarriage very soon, and you will lose the child you are currently carrying in your womb. Following this, a serious illness will attack you, and you will suffer real depression, and real disappointment in love. Even your husband will no longer want you and will want to chase you away. You will encounter a lot of financial difficulties. I assure you that peace will flee from you in your home from now on. Boss, I'm not sure what's wrong with me today, but my stomach hurts a lot. Oh yes? What's wrong with you, Kate? I don't know, boss, since this morning, my stomach hurts a lot. Okay, you can go home. Don't forget to take medicine afterwards. Okay boss, thank you very much for understanding me. You're welcome Kate, and take very good care of yourself. Thanks. You know what, madam, be strong and courageous, because what I have to tell you is not at all good. The herbal teas that you confessed and drank this morning against your stomachache made you abort the baby you are carrying in your breast. You have just had a miscarriage, and you will need urgent surgery, otherwise you also risk losing your life. What? But I didn't know I was pregnant. Unfortunately yes, I am really sorry to tell you this news. I'll quickly go and prepare the operating room, and I'll come back to you. Alright. Oh. My god, why me? Me and my husband have been wanting to have a child for quite a while now. There it came and we aborted it. I just imagined for a moment if my husband found out about this. But what was he going to tell me? I'm confused. I really don't know what to do anymore. My soul is truly in distress. But, what does my wife just have to say to me? I can't wait to go see her in the hospital. It's truly incredible what I had just learned. But how can you make such a mistake? Didn't I forbid you from mixing herbal teas like that again? I'm really disgusted with you. But how can you take the life of a fetus like that? But I didn't do it on purpose, my husband. Understand me. I have nothing to understand. If you don't get pregnant yet by the end of this year, I assure you that things will get heated between you and me. We really won't be able to stay together anymore, because I'm really tired of waiting. As I told you, me and the rest of the team noticed that you were no longer productive as before. You are absolutely right boss. It's because I had family problems recently. I'm really on the verge of depression. Things are not going very well at the moment in my relationship. Okay Kate, you know what, you're going to take a few days off to sort out the differences you had with your husband. Oh. Okay that works. Thank you very much boss for granting me this. You're welcome Kate. It's normal. You will come back in two weeks. You can now dispose of it. Perfect. Good riddance, my friend. 
People who don't want to work, I don't want them in my company. Did you think I was going to call you back in two weeks? You are totally wrong. From tomorrow, someone else will come and replace you. Like, I told you my friend. I came back to give you what I promised you. Je ne parle pas anglais mon ami. What? You don't recognize me anymore? Why are you talking to me, in French now? Non, je ne vous reconnais pas, monsieur. Il me semble que nous ne nous sommes jamais rencontrés. What? But has this gentleman gone mad or what? He had just told me that he no longer recognized me. It's not serious. You know my friend, if I had brought you this bag, it's really for the love of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I give it to you. It's a man who shouts like that. Unbelievable. But what's happening to you? I can't stay here anymore. I am leaving. You should never mention that name around me. Great. Your voice is back and you speak in English again. Let us give glory to God. He had just neutralized my power in a split second. Do you not know that I am a spirit in the flesh and that I was sent as a beggar, destroying the lives and destinies of many people? This name really resonates with me. It's so much more powerful and stronger than me. It's amazing how he escaped. He didn't even take what I brought him. I honestly think this beggar has a serious problem. Sometimes he speaks in English, sometimes he speaks in French. I have the impression that he was inhabited by an impure spirit. As I told you, my boss didn't call me again after my two weeks of vacation. You know what? I am currently tired of everything that is happening to us. If this continues like this, I think we will divorce, and everyone will go their separate ways. Because I can't take it anymore, I just want the bad news to stop. But it's not my fault, my husband. It's never your fault. Where are we going to get the money now, to pay our bills? Hello now financial problems. This is a bit of what is happening in my life right now. Oh, you know what? Everything that's happening to you isn't normal. I already feel the hand of the enemy is working in your life. Because in record time, you had a lot of problems. You had a miscarriage. Peace is no longer in your home. You and your husband don't get along anymore. You suffered from depression, and as a result, our boss fired you, and currently he has hired another temporary worker in your place. That's exactly it colleague, I don't understand anything at all anymore. I already understand what is happening. You know, it is written in the book of Matthew 11, verse 28 this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus colleague, and you will be saved. You and your whole family. Repeat this after me. Strangely, this beggar has disappeared. I no longer see him at all in the mornings, before taking my train and going to work. Fortunately for me I had invoked the name of Jesus Christ before giving him this gift. Lord Jesus, I come to you with an open heart. I recognize that I need you in my life. I believe that you died for my sins, and that you rose from the dead. I ask you now to come into my life, forgive my sins, and give me the strength to follow you. I also ask you to break all curses, and psychic words, that have been spoken over me. I put my trust in you, Jesus, as my Savior, and my Deliverer. It is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I prayed, Amen. You know what sister, when you were praying earlier, I saw in a vision that you had once given money to a beggar, without having invoked the name of Jesus. You know, this beggar took your money, and said a lot of bad incantation words to you. It was on that very day that you opened the door to the curse on your life. Yes, I remember this beggar very well. You are absolutely right, colleague. It's true that it was from that day on that the problem started in my life. All right. Let us give infinite glory to God for this. I sincerely believe that with the prayer that we had just done, everything was cancelled. Go, in peace, colleague, and may Jesus Christ keep you. Amen. I'm angry because a chicken left my cage. The words of curse I had spoken over this lady have been undone. I absolutely have to find someone else in her place. This time, I'm going to change strategy and location. I need my 30 people before going back to my superior.
Last time, I saw this beggar in the same place again. I'll go see him right away, so I can settle accounts with him. He'll hear from me right away. But is he not here anymore or what? Are you looking for the gentleman who asks for money very often here in the morning? Oh. Yes, I would love to cane him. Because he is truly a public danger, I did him good, and thanking me he cast spells on me, and spoke psychic words. Wow, this is incredible. You know the last time, I wanted to give him gifts while mentioning the name of Jesus Christ, and he started screaming and running away from me. I looked for him everywhere, and I couldn't find him again. For me this gentleman is not human. It is a spirit that was sent to destroy human beings on earth. Okay thank you very much sir, for your testimony. I hope to find him again. Go in the peace of the Lord, and God bless you. Really don't seek revenge. Surrender yourself to God, and he will take very good care of you. God bless you. Thank you very much sir. From today on, I will never give money to a beggar again, without invoking the name of Jesus Christ. Because I realize today that the name of Jesus Christ sincerely liberates us against everything which want to harm us. I am so happy with the life we have in Christ today. I'm surprised my wife. I didn't know that the Christian life was so wonderful. We have assurance in Jesus Christ, and we no longer worry about our future. I truly bless the day I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. Me to my husband. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you. Thank you for agreeing to meet me Mr. Philippe. You know it's a big risk I'm taking by agreeing to see you outside the office. I could be convicted because of this, because all files are confidential. Yes, yes I know, don't worry, I will reward you beyond your expectations. Okay, what information do you want to have? I would like to be able to win all the prizes in this market offer. If you can give me the exact budgets planned for each batch, that would help me a lot. What do you mean, you're too greedy? I can't give you such information, it would be more than obvious that someone helped you. I can only give you the price of 2 lots out of the 14 lots on the market. That doesn't suit me at all. I can't do more than that Mr. Pasha. I don't have a choice anyway okay? I accept. You are the one I trust the most you're not. If we ever win this deal our lives will completely change. This market will bring me billions in profits. I'm really willing to do anything to have it. That's why I want you to try to quietly bribe all the right people for the case. Okay sir. But the person who usually helps me told me that this time he won't be able to give me the information I want. I said everything to try to convince him, but he refused. Okay it does not matter. I have another way. Greetings master. I have an urgent problem that I would like to resolve. I'm listening to you. I want to bid on a market worth more than 10 million dollars you would like to win the entire market and I am ready to give everything for that. Okay, I'll introduce you to the Grandmaster. I can give you what you want. But what will you give me in exchange? Whatever you want, Grandmaster. One hand against one hand. A tooth for a tooth. You will be rich but your children and their descendants will not be able to. They will not succeed in life. They will always have financial problems. This is the contract between you and me. It's okay with me. I agree with this contract. He said my children won't be rich. Either way, my children will inherit my business and my fortune. So they won't be in need. I brought you all the files in full. There are all the details in there. Thank you Mr. Philippe. Forgive me my wife. I have not been a good father and husband. No do not say that. If you're sick it's not your fault. If only you knew. I never thought I would end my life becoming poor again. Here I am, 
spending all the fortune I wanted to leave to my children on medicines and medical treatments. The Lord will help us. I better start looking for a job. Fortunately, Dad was able to pay for all our schooling before his illness started. I'm afraid he will die. How are we going to get through this? It's going to be okay, my sister. I have already started looking for a job, and I hope to be called soon since I have studied in the best universities in the world. Mom informed me that it was becoming difficult to continue paying Dad's hospital bills. He will have to leave the private clinic for a public hospital. Let us surrender to God. I would like to know under what conditions I can move my husband from this clinic to take him elsewhere. Oh ma'am, I'm really sorry, I came to tell you that your husband has died. Oh no my god. How is it possible? So we spend all our fortune in vain. Dad is dead and life is getting harder every day. Me and my sister, none of us found a job despite our great qualifications. It's incredible. It's going to be okay, my son. I myself don't understand what is happening, but every day I pray for you. It'll be fine. Miss Victoire, you have a very good career, and a good CV. Congratulations. I'm really impressed. Thank you, sir. I'll think about it and call you back. Okay, thank you, sir. I cannot stand it anymore. I don't understand why neither you nor I can find work. However, we have very good CVS. It's weird. It's not you alone. After returning from France, I already saw myself working in large companies here. It's weird that everyone tells us they'll call us back, but they never do. We have been looking for nine months. I'm starting to get discouraged. Just search. I will always be behind you. You will never get a job, even if you find one it will be a lousy job. It was your father who gave me this right over you, and even over your children's children. I will take responsibility for ensuring that all the clauses of this law are respected. How have you been since the death of your husband big sister? We spent almost all of Pasha's fortune to treat his cancer in vain. What concerns me right now is the children. None of them have found a job for almost nine months, they have been looking for work. But what is this? Your children are highly educated and have studied abroad. How do they search and find nothing so far? I ask myself questions. I opened a new restaurant in town. If they are interested, they can come and direct it for me. I was looking for people I could trust. Oh thank you sister. I will tell them. Your aunt opened a restaurant, and she wants you to run it while you are looking to find a job that really suits you. Glory to God. Even though it's not what I was looking for, I'm happy to start working. I suggest that we replace each other every day so that we can continue to look for work. Yes, my brother. I agree. But frankly, I believe we also need prayer. We should talk about it with the aunt. She can guide us on this path. I also think something is wrong with us. I called you because I want to talk to you about a somewhat personal subject. It's about you and your brother. Honestly, I find it strange that no company was interested in your CV. I believe this is a spiritual problem, and to resolve this problem you should enter the new covenant. Your problem may be due to a family connection. I don't know anything about the spiritual life, but I told myself that our problem was not of natural origin. How should we enter into this new alliance? The Bible declares that as many as received him, the Word gave power to become children of God, who were born neither of the will of the flesh nor of the will of blood. When you believe in Jesus, and give your life to Him, you become a child of God. And this brings you into a covenant with Almighty God. This act makes you leave the world of darkness, for the light of the world. You become a new creature and old things have passed away, behold all things become new, for you on the spiritual level. Would you give your life to Jesus? to save your soul and to break family ties. To my aunt, I am happy that you explain all these things to me, I am happy and today I say yes to the Lord Jesus, I confess Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. 
I will bring you to my pastor. He will conduct you to repentance and you will take your water baptism. Amen. I will also talk to my brother about it. But how could this happen? Legally, they no longer have rights to them. They gave their life to the just man. But if they don't kick me out, I'm not going anywhere. I will continue to pursue them. I thank God that by putting our faith into action, we were able to get through this. Yes, my sister, but we are not there yet. I live by earning the bare necessities. My business is not growing despite all my efforts. I feel like I'm still stuck. I see great business opportunities that escape me. It is time that we know concretely what we must pray against. I was talking about my financial life with a brother at church last time, and I have a meeting with him to talk about it. Okay, keep me informed. Therefore my brother gives glory to the Lord, for he knows all things, and reveals all things to his beloved. I put you in prayer after you told me about your financial difficulties. And the Lord revealed to me that in your family there is a spirit that is preventing you from prospering. I don't know why, but the good news is that you no longer belong to your old lineage. You are from the lineage of Jesus the King of Kings. So, you're going to raise your voice, for you and your sister. And break every satanic alliance pact, which demands your finances according to what is written in Corinthians 8 verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. May Jesus make you rich, so that you may be enriched. You have the right to prosperity as a child of God. But before we begin prayer, I would like to exhort you on the issue of tithes and offerings. It is written that he who loves himself little will reap little, and he who loves himself abundantly will reap abundantly. Giving tithing and offerings in a church is actually like planting seeds in fertile soil. He who sows corn seeds in fertile land will abundantly harvest tons of corn after a few months. This is the principle of wealth in the kingdom of God. But Satan has made God's children believe that it is the pastors who use the offerings of the faithful. This way of thinking was introduced by Satan into the church to prevent God's children from prospering. I actually admit that I never tithe. It's a few times that I make the effort to give the offerings. But from today I resolve to always give my tithe, and above all to give it with joy and without constraint. There you go, you understand. After the prayer I encourage you to take an act of faith by donating a substantial amount of your choice, wherever the Lord tells you, as an act of obedience to the Lord. God say in Malachi 3 verse 10, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Today I truly understood. Okay now let's pray. By the power of the name of Jesus, in accordance with the divine exchange that took place on the cross. According to the word of the Lord, which declares that Christ became poor that we might be rich. I pray now for my brother. Father in the name of Jesus I break every chain of poverty that binds him and his sister. I cancel every pact every satanic clause, that prevents them from prospering financially. In the name of Jesus, I cast out every spirit of poverty that pursues me and my sister. I and my descendants belong to the Lord. Jesus set me free. In the name of Jesus, I call down prosperity upon my life and that of my sister. I break the bonds of poverty that prevent us from moving forward. I invoke the fire of the Holy Spirit, and I invoke the blood of Jesus for us. I am touched. All my incantations are broken. I will start to give my tithe today and I will give now a big amount considering that I didn't give my tithe since I gave my life to Jesus Christ. The Lord will certainly bless your act of faith my brother. Be blessed. Mr. Landry, I am pleased to announce that your company has been selected for the market. You have just won a very large market worth more than $10 million. The Lord is an incredible and faithful God. This is the deal my father had to make a satanic pact to get. The Lord has given me a greater bargain than this. What is the tithe? The word tithe comes from an old English root meaning one-tenth. It is the common English translation for the Old Testament Hebrew Sar word group. 
The tithe was an offering of one's agricultural income to the Lord as an expression of thanks and dedication. In the Old Testament agricultural economy, tithes were paid not in cash, gold or goods but in crops or livestock, for only the agricultural fruit of the promised land was to be tithed, not other forms of income. Although today we commonly think of the tithe as 10% as a result, apparently there are three tithes in the Old Testament, two every year and a third every third year, or an average of 23.3% of one's annual produce from the land. There was also provision for free will offerings and personal giving above and beyond the tithe, so that the tithe never stood alone. Tithing acknowledges acceptance of God's authority. Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy sets out the tithes and offerings requirement to the early Israelites in order for them to receive the blessings of God Most High. Our sovereign God is a God of order. He created the Levitical tithing system as a means of taking care of the priests, the Levites, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows who lived within their gates. But throughout the word there is a promise attached to giving required tithes and offerings. Numbers 14 28-29 NKJ That the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. Deuteronomy 14 29 BNKJ Why would anyone gag over gnats and gulp camels when it comes to giving a portion back to El Elyon, who gives us everything? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth or rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6 19-21 Ancient Jerusalem's king priest received tithes. Genesis 14 18-20 introduces us to Melchizedek, king of Salem, ancient Jerusalem, whose scripture identifies as a priest of God Most High, El Elyon, Sovereign Lord. Abram is on his way home from a successful battle when King Priest, Melchizedek, brought out bread and wine and blessed Abram, blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of all, Genesis 14 20 is. The MacArthur Study Bible notes this is the first mention in scripture of giving 10%. This 10% offering was voluntary, unlike the required tenth to come in the Mosaic Law. Israel robbed God. What about you? The biblical account tells of disobedient kings and hard-hearted Israelites. Finally, God sent his chosen people into captivity because of their sin and rebellion. Israel was dispersed by Assyria and Judah was sent to Babylon for 70 years. At the appointed time, just as God said, King Cyrus signed the decree and sent his cubbearer Nehemiah to lead Judah's people back to Jerusalem. But the last Old Testament prophet, Malachi, issued a stern warning from God to those returning refugees. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, In what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Malachi 3, 6-9. Does the New Testament teach tithing? The Lord had sworn and will not relent, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, Psalm 110, 4 NKJ. The writer of Hebrews quotes this passage from the psalmist in Hebrews 7, 17-21 and further states, for such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, who does not need daily as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. But the word of the oath, which came after the law, appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. Jesus Christ is the perfected Son, our high priest. He saved us from the penalty of sin. Acts 4 tells us about the giving habits of the early New Testament church. They sold all they had and laid it at the feet of the apostles, to distribute as everyone had need. God doesn't ask you to sell everything. But Jesus left us with one command, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Matthew 28, 19-20 is Going, telling, baptizing and teaching takes money, money God provides by giving you and me the talents and abilities to earn money to care for our families in this church. 
Jesus is our superior priest. For when the priesthood is changed, of necessity there takes place a change of law also. And this is clearer still, if another priest arises according to the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become such not on the basis of a law of physical requirement, but according to the power of an indestructible life. For it is witnessed of him. Thou art a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Hebrews 7 12 22 is. Hebrews 7 4 9 shows the superiority of the Melchizedek priesthood to the Levitical priests. Abraham, the ancestor of the Levites, paid tithes to Melchizedek. Melchizedek, whose genealogy is outside that of the Levites, took tithes of Abraham, who is the recipient himself of the divine promise, but scripture teaches Jesus is our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. If Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, why should you and I be exempt from paying tithes to God Most High and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ? Could tithing be a barometer of your heart? God created a very good world. He said so, six times in the first chapter of Genesis, God saw everything He had made and God saw that it was good. But in chapter 3 everything changed. Adam's disobedience and Eve's deception. By listening to the serpent rather than obeying God, sin entered the Father's perfect world, just like He said it would. In chapter 4, we find the first mention of an offering. Cain brought fruit and Abel brought a firstborn lamb from his flock. Abel's offering was respected but Cain's was not. Why was Abel's offering respected when Cain's was not? Because Abel was obedient to give what God revealed. But Cain had no regard for divine instruction, he gave what he wanted. Cain was angry with God, refused to repent, and rejected God's opportunity to change his ways. Angry and jealous. He killed his brother and was cursed by God. Tithing blesses us. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 7 God created you and me. He numbered the hairs on our heads, and His only Son died a horrible death to pay for your sins and mine, if we trust and obey what Jesus offered, His own blood to pay for our sins and shame. Why would we not be eager to give back to Him a portion of all He's lavished upon you and me? Abundant grace? Sufficiency in all things? An eternal home with Him? Hallelujah! Sign me up! Family ties, however strong, can be broken by faith and prayer. Also, I encourage you to give your tithes and your offerings to have access to the keys to the wealth of the kingdom, because the Lord is a multiplier. May the Lord multiply your income in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you. It's December. You're going to have to offer someone important to you to get a higher level in witchcraft. Last year I gave away my only son. This time I want to offer my husband. By what means will he die? I have decided that he will die tomorrow, in a car accident on Bugen Bridge. But I have a situation that surprises me, Queen Mother. For two years, I still haven't been able to reach my eldest daughter. I tried to stab her several times in her sleep without success. What's stopping you from doing it? I feel like a barrier between her and me. She has been attending a church for some time. And she truly prays with authority. I have to move away from her every time, so as not to be burned. I think she knows I'm a witch, and that's why she moved out of the house without my permission. And I will never forgive her for that. If I still can't kill her, I'm going to make her suffer in other ways, because whether she likes it or not, she belongs to me. She will never have children, neither her nor her little sister. From the day they were born, I removed their wombs and buried them and I also cut the hair from the middle of their heads. Even if she prays a lot and well, she will not escape us. When we kill these people, the master rewards us doubly. 
I have already eaten all my children, and some of my grandchildren, that is why I am the Queen Mother. If you can't kill your eldest daughter, we'll help you do it. I'm going to bewitch my husband's car to cause a fatal accident. May this car now be under the control of the power of darkness. Where is your mother, my daughter? She hadn't felt well since the afternoon. She went to bed. Okay, I see. Well, I'll go to bed too. Tomorrow you will die, Gislaine. <laughs> my darling, I hope you are feeling better this morning. Yes, by the grace of God, I woke up feeling great this morning. Great. Now I'm going to go to work. Okay, have a nice day, darling, and have a good trip. Thank you, my wife. Today you will die. This is your last day, my husband. And why are the brakes on this car no longer working? Ah, uh -huh. oh no, a truck is coming. My husband is about to die. We will collect his body after the burial. I couldn't do anything, Mom. Dad left us. Oh no, my God. I will not be able to bear the loss of my husband. How did he die? He was still alive when the ambulance brought him in. But he eventually succumbed. We're going to bury your father next Saturday. Okay, Mom. I can't believe your father is dead. It's like a nightmare for me. It's not just you, Mom. I can't even eat or work at work anymore. Gislaine. Gislaine. Rise from your grave. Patricia, it's really you? Why are we here? Did you kill me? <laughs> yes, it's me, Gislaine. Jesus, help me, help, help. No one is going to help you here. You are already dead. You can scream as much as you want. Have mercy on me. Patricia, what did I do to you to deserve this? I have always been a good husband to you. Patricia, what animal do you want him to transform into? I want to turn him into beef. Oh Lord help me. I lived with a witch all these years without knowing it. What are you going to do to our children? Were you the one who killed our son last year? Have mercy Patricia. Shut up. I am now turning you into a beef gizlane. Let's throw it in the boiler and eat it. The rest of the meat I will sell in the butchers at the market to provoke unconscious witchcraft. Now that my husband is dead, I will focus on my daughters. If Tanya thinks she's going to stop me from reaching her, she's wrong. Especially now that I've gained more power. You know my sister. I think you should move. Now that dad is dead, mom will need more support. I can't leave her like this. There is something wrong with mom. How so? What's wrong with her? I often dream of her. One day I saw her cut the hair from the middle of my head and several other times. I saw her standing next to my bed. It was because I had these kinds of dreams too much that I moved out of the house before my marriage. And so you were insinuating that our mother, who is so kind as that, is a witch. Don't be angry, Corrine. I'm just saying what I saw in my dreams. That's why I never told you about it. And please don't tell mom any of this. If you can agree to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ to have an active spiritual life that would be great. And I would be a little reassured. Okay we'll see. Maybe I'll come to your church one day. 
But right now, I don't want to. Okay, I'm not going to put pressure on you. I'm going to sell this meat at the market. Ah, oh, hello Miss Claire. What meat did you bring me today? Yes, Maurice. I brought some beef. Okay, give me that. When you bring me your meats, I sell them quickly. If only he knew that it is because of the calling hound that I placed on his display that all the customers eagerly come to buy the meat from him. Je voudrais vous dire que mon petit ami est ma proposée à mes Bowser. Nes nes Marion stands three moist. Ah good. So soon you will also leave the house and I will stay here alone forever? Aren't you happy for me, Mom? Okay, I understand. Get married and leave home. I had yet another miscarriage, colleague. Really after analyzing your medical file, I don't understand what explains all these miscarriages you're having. Nothing justifies this problem. I've already tried everything. It's been two years already. Each time the pregnancy fails. I am really fed up. I need to find a solution to this problem. I understand your anger, Tanya. The Lord will help you. You should seek revelation from God. Otherwise you will spend all your money in vain. One year of marriage and two miscarriages already. You have to ask yourself the right questions. Did you have abortions before you married me? If that's why you can't keep a pregnancy, I'm going to file for divorce. How can you think such a thing? You see very well that I too suffer as much as you. I've already been to the hospital and they told me I have no problem. Do your research to find the medication you need. Otherwise I'm not sure I can tolerate this situation for another year. My mother puts pressure on me to see her grandchildren. <laughs> My daughters believe they are stronger than me, because they took refuge in awakened churches. But I won't leave them in peace. They will never understand the cause of their repetitive miscarriages. So like that, you had another miscarriage. I'm sorry for you my daughter. I talked about it to an old friend who knows a lot about plants. I bought herbal teas for you and your sister. Take them for at least three months. And we will see the results. Okay thank you mom. I'm coming back from mom's. She gave me medicine for miscarriage. I brought you your share. She believes it will work. She also complained that you never came to see her. You should make the schedule to come visit her. I won't go see her. I don't feel it in my heart. Speaking of this miscarriage thing, don't you think it's weird that you and I have the same problem? Yes, it's true. I thought maybe it's a hereditary link. This is an activity of darkness against us. Now it is written that we have overcome him, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Which means that it is through the blood of Jesus that we have overcome these miscarriages. And in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 it is written that Christ blotted out the ordinances of which the acts accused us and nailed them to the cross. I refuse to continue to suffer, when the Lord Jesus has already paid the price for my freedom. By the blood of Jesus, I will recover my womb, and my children. I don't want to let it happen anymore. In a month there is a prayer vigil at the church based on the work of the cross. I want you to come too. In the meantime, I recommend that you stick up in your room all the verses that relate to the victory of Jesus on the cross, and proclaim them over your life. For my part, I invoke the blood of Jesus every day on my uterus, proclaiming victory. You're really right. I will come. And starting tonight, I will begin to pray every day invoking the blood of Jesus. I call upon the blood of Jesus upon my life and I testify that Jesus paid the price for my freedom. He erased the deed whose ordinances condemned me to the cross. So let the blood of Jesus speak for my womb now. May what prevents me from giving birth be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid my debts, I owe nothing to anyone. I invoke the blood of Jesus in the world of darkness against my persecutors. Continue to pray. Don't get distracted by your neighbor. The blood of Jesus flowed on the earth, didn't it? 
Now command the earth to vomit up everything that belongs to you and has been buried. Dig up everything that belongs to you. Go and pray like this in the name of Jesus. Ah! By the power of the blood of Jesus, which flowed on earth for my freedom. Earth now listens to my commands in the name of Jesus. I order you to open your mouth and dig up everything that belongs to me. Vomit everything that is mine. Come on, vomit them up, in the name of Jesus. How is it possible? All the gourds in which I buried my daughter's wombs have been dug up. How it is possible? Did the earth listen to their orders? Okay, it is not serious. They defeated me by the earth. I will attack them now with the wind. I don't know how they managed to recover the uteruses and their hair. They took everything back. We will attack them even more forcefully, with all kinds of problems in all areas of their lives. I'm listening to you Sandrin, what do the results of my blood test give? You are finally pregnant my friend. Oh really? Thanks my god. After three years of prayer and suffering, I finally saw your hand. Thank you Lord. Do you realize that it was after this prayer that we were finally able to conceive? Truly, you were right when you said that there is an invisible hand against us. God does not sleep. He sees everything, now that we are pregnant we will have to redouble our effort in prayer. Because certainly the person who wishes us harm is not going to stop there. Oh my daughter. I'm really happy that you are finally pregnant. I prayed so much to God for you and your sister. Thanks mom. God heard our prayers. Where is your husband? I would like to speak to him. He went out, mom. Okay. If he comes back tell him to come by and see me at home. I'm going to take some of the dust from this house and come back at night. I will succeed in destroying you and your sister. Here we will see who is the strongest. In any case, this pregnancy will not come to term. I will do everything in my power for this. With the dust of this house and the wind, I blow a wind of misfortune and destruction on this house. Let the dust invade and destroy everything in this house. May the air that blows in this house be nothing but misfortune. I give this water as an offering to the spirits of death in this house, to arise and work against the inhabitants of this house. I command water, air and fire to destroy the lives of my daughters. Listen carefully to my orders and carry them out. Hit them with all kinds of misfortunes. May the moon strike them in the middle of the night, and may the sun strike them in the daytime. Moon and Sun, I order you to always work against my children, strike them with all kinds of misfortunes. My gynecologist told me that I risk giving birth to a premature baby, because I suffer from severe anemia, that scares me. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. Our pastor shared this testimony at Easter last year. He said his wife suffered from very severe anemia. He prayed and the Holy Spirit told his wife to take the body and blood of Jesus every day, declaring that it was a blood transfusion that she was doing. So she took the Saint Saint every day for about a month. When she returned to the hospital, the doctor was shocked to see that the anemia had completely disappeared. Wow, this testimony strengthens me a lot. From today I am going to start taking the Holy Saint to destroy this anemia which wants to cause me pain. I also remember the testimony of a brother in the church who was miraculously cured of lung cancer after taking the Holy Saint for three weeks. The blood of Jesus is so powerful, it is the remedy for all the evils that the devil inflicts on us, in all areas of our lives. But unfortunately many children of God do not know the power hidden in this blood. My mother came to the house yesterday, she asked about you. Ah good. What did she say? She said to come see her at her house. Are you and her close? No. We're not that close. I'll drop you off at the hospital and then I'll go see her. Okay. It's good that you quickly came to see me. I know you are not stubborn like your wife. You saw how long it took for her to get pregnant. 
I inquired and they told me that there was an invisible hound that was preventing her from giving birth. Since she started attending her big sister's church, she has refused all the mystical help that I offer her. His only wish is that I too come to his church. But I do not want to. That's exactly why I called you. She needs protection. I want us to help him spiritually. I will give you some water that a master gave me. We have to do everything we can to get her to drink the water. Don't tell her where this water comes from. Let everything we do be a secret between you and me. Okay, Mom. Thanks a lot for your help. I am here at your disposal. I am ready to do anything so that my child can be born. Please, my son. Don't forget that it's a secret between you and me. Okay, Mom. Why haven't you drunk the water I brought you for over three months? Because you didn't explain to me where this water comes from. I can't take anything without the advice of my gynecologist. I told you it was a doctor friend of mine who gave it to me. It's alkaline water for your benefit. You're going to drink this water today before I go to work. Go get her to drink this water. But I have no problem at the moment. You are too stubborn. Okay, I'm going to drink this famous water. Father, I thank you for this water. I cleanse it now in the name of Jesus, and I drink it with thanksgiving. Same thing again. She canceled all the orders I had given to this water. The only solution I try to continue to use her husband to reach her, since I can't have her, I will have here child. Your wife is in mortal danger. I consulted the master and he said that she will die the day she gives birth. Something has to be done to her. What can I do, mom? I will take you to the master and you will give him permission to act on your wife. Witchcraft is stalking your wife and child. What should I do to prevent this misfortune? Just give me some money to do some protection work on her. The snake spirits will protect your wife on the day of childbirth. I'm going to give you some ointment that you can rub on her navel while she sleeps in the evenings. So she will give birth safely. Okay, thank you very much, Master. I hope this time it will work. I just want a little door so I can get in. But she is too obedient to her God. Glory to Jesus. My husband has just been bringing mystical items into the house lately, hoping I'll help myself and end up using them. If only my husband were also a Christian like yours. I wouldn't have all these problems. Do not worry. One day the Lord will end up touching his heart. Amen. This is my biggest prayer. Today Tina wants to give birth. We are going to confuse the doctors. We are going to confuse them into doing the job wrong until she dies. Here is the midwife who wants to give birth to her. I will influence him. I'm confusing you now about Tina's birth. Be totally confused and do your job badly. My wife is giving birth. Raise your voice with me to destroy all plants of the dark world against her life and that of the baby. All right. I now stand in Jesus' victory on the cross. And I order that every attempt of the dark world against my wife's childbirth will be crowned with failure. I now call upon the fire of the Holy Spirit in this hospital to destroy the works of the evil one. I invoke the blood of Jesus around my wife, around the medical personnel who want to care for her, and on all work instruments that will be used in the name of Jesus. God's Holy Spirit now takes control. Amen in the name of Jesus. I've never failed so much by wanting to kill someone like that. All our attempts are null and void. I really don't have any other solutions. I'm going to wait until my wife is asleep to give her the ointment. Whether she likes it or not. She will be protected by the spirits of the mother. I feel the contractions, but also my heart hurts. But why have you been having seizures since we I'm really scared. We have to perform a cesarean section on your wife. But why? The umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. Save my wife, doctor. I hope it's not because of that ointment I put on his navel yesterday that all this is happening. She was perfectly fine before. Oh Lord forgive me. This time I will succeed. I will make sure that the midwife forgets the scissors in her stomach after the cesarean section. And she died from it a few days later. My sister is alone there in this hospital. Even if I can't go. I'll pray for her from here.
The mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Lord God of faithfulness now send your hand on my sister, you who do not abandon those who believe in you. Protect my sister during childbirth. May all Satan's plans be null and void. I take authority in the name of Jesus and walk over every power of witchcraft, over every snake and scorpion that wants to harm her. I put her and her baby under the covering of the blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus now make her invisible to every evil eye. In the name of Jesus I prayed. Amen. Amen so be it. Ah, what is going on? I can't see anything at all anymore. How it is possible? But what prayers do they pray exactly? I'm totally confused. So far the Lord has helped us. Yes God is faithful, we have become mothers despite the plan of sterility that darkness had planned for us. I would like to tell someone today that you owe nothing to the dark world. Jesus paid all your debts on the cross, he made an exchange, he took your curse, to give you his blessing. This is a gift from God to you. The blood of Jesus is terribly powerful. I encourage you from today to get into the habit of praying invoking the blood of Jesus. No sorcery passing through water, earth, air or fire will ever have power over you. They overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. Thank you for watching. May the blood of Jesus cover you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you. My darling, I would like you to come and live with me in cohabitation, because until now, I have not yet been able to raise the amount requested for the dowry. Afterwards we will see how to celebrate our wedding. My family members will disagree. But since we've been together for a few years already, I'm going to try to convince them to let me live with you. When are you going to leave Marcel Villeneuve's house? You know, Marcel doesn't love you anymore. He regrets asking you to live with him. Because you look like an old woman. He made the mistake of getting into a relationship with you before meeting me. But who are you? And where do you know my husband? He is not your husband. Has he given you the dowry all the time you have been living with him? Let me inform you that it is me, he will dowry soon and I will come to live with him as his real wife. I'm not a free woman like you. You are truly a mistake in Marcel's life, and fortunately he quickly realized it. Naughty woman. I do not believe you. You lie. Since you don't believe me, go ask him yourself. I saw a girl earlier at the market telling me that she will soon come to live here and that you even want to give her a dowry. Do you know who she is? Listen Marco, I was looking for a way to tell you, but I no longer feel anything for you. I want you to leave my house, because Anae is the one I truly love. So you've been cheating on me with her for a long time? No, I met her a long time ago. But we were just friends. It happened now that we began to love each other differently. I decided to marry her. Like you and me, we're not married yet. I want you to leave my house, so I can move in with my real wife. You will bitterly regret what you just did to me. I will never forgive you. But it's not my fault. I tried to forget her but I couldn't. I realized that I had made a mistake in getting into a relationship with you. What I liked about you was your simplicity. But all this no longer means anything to me. All the love I felt for you disappeared overnight. Forgive me. I beg you. You will certainly find the one the Lord has reserved for you. It seems like you don't realize the harm you're doing to me right now. I promise you won't be the only one to pay. But you and all your descendants will regret it. Nature is witness to the humiliation and injustice you have just caused me. It's not my fault. The heart has its reasons that reason ignores. It is me that Marcel threw out like a worthless woman. I will curse him with all the power necessary, so that nothing can ever revoke this curse. I finally managed to get her to leave, but you shouldn't have told her the news like that in my market. She had been very supportive of me in the past. However, I welcome you to your home. Thank you honey. 
May God grant us longevity and lots of happiness. I call on the spirits of my ancestors, the spirits of death. I curse Marcel and Anai, I curse their home and their future children. No girl or boy from this family will be able to stay in a home for long. Since I was kicked out only after seven months of cohabitation. No son or daughter will marry into this family. They will all live together, and their partners will kick them out after seven months of living together. May it be so upon their children's children. I call death into their love lives. I send these words out into the universe to pursue them wherever they go. May celibacy be their share. We've been engaged for three years, and we've been trying to get married to no avail. There are always blockages. I don't understand why anymore. Oh really myself, I'm tired of living far from you. As soon as we decide to start planning the wedding, there is no more money coming in. However, I do not want to live in cohabitation like my mother and my grandmother in the past. There has never been a marriage celebrated in my family. I promised myself that I would be the exception, but apparently the same thing happens to me too. My older sister was conceived in marriage, as soon as my parents got together, a few months later they separated. That's why I grew up only with my mother. My father married another woman to him. To tell you the truth, I'm a little afraid that the same thing will happen to me. Don't worry my darling. It was because your grandparents didn't really love each other that they separated. This will not be our case. I promise you that I will never set my eyes on any other woman but you. We will live together forever. Good how we can't get married when we love each other so much. Let's live together, and as soon as we finally manage to raise the necessary money, we will get married. After all there are many people who live together without getting married. I am obliged to accept this proposal. We no longer have a choice. Madam, take your things and leave my house immediately. Why what did I do to you? Everything is fine between you and me. I don't need to give my reasons. When we didn't live together, I saw you as the most perfect woman in the world. But now I don't find anything special about you anymore. I remind you that I am four months pregnant and you are chasing me away with the baby. You can very well give birth at your mother's house. Didn't you tell me yourself that your mother also didn't stay with your father for long? I believe this is your destiny too. She will help you take care of yourself. But when I told you the story of my mother and my grandmother, you sympathized. And today you also do the same thing to me? For what? Just get out of my house. Mom, Tanya just called me to tell me that her husband kicked her out of the house for no reason. Ah, I'm not surprised, my daughter. None of the daughters or sons in our family can stay in one household for long. It's like a curse, my mother also only stayed for barely seven months. But why does all this happen to us? I was hoping that my daughters wouldn't also have the same problem as me, but I'm sad to see that history is repeating itself again. I've been single all these years, and so have you. Is Satan behind us or what? They are forced to suffer like us. It is our destiny. It's the blood that speaks. What's wrong with you, Alice? Frank just chased me away for no reason. But what do you mean, for no reason? Luke was ready to do anything for you, just a few months ago. Did you argue? No, we didn't argue. He woke up this morning in a bad mood and asked me to leave. I'm desperate. This is what is happening to the sons and daughters of this family that is also happening in my life. It is a curse that weighs on us. How can we break this curse? I don't want to lose him. I don't want to stay single like mom. I don't know but it's time we seek spiritual help. I don't want the same thing to happen to me as to you. I will go see a pastor to find out what to do. I have always ruled this family for generations. No one will ever end this curse. I will always ensure that no daughter or son of this family gets married. They will never be able to live in the same house with their partner. It will be celibacy for all. But why is that? What happened? 
they had no problem. I sincerely believe that there is a curse in my family. And I don't want the same thing to happen to us. That's why I decided that we can solve this problem through prayer first. I plan to contact a man of God to find out how to put an end to such a situation. This decision does not make me happy. I already want us to be together, but I also believe that it is the best thing to do. Looking for help. I don't want this curse to hit us too. Why does this curse pursue us? What stops us from getting married and living with our partner? Grandma, don't you have any idea why this curse hits us? I'm not sure I know the story. But I was told once when I asked my father. He said there was an ancestor of ours who treated his first wife like nothing. He didn't want to give her a dowry and then he kicked her out of the house after a few months to marry someone else. Perhaps it is because of this past that we pay the price today. Oh I see. What he did was wrong. But how are we responsible? Why was I born into this family? Nothing but problems. Even though I am pregnant, my partner chases me away mercilessly. I am desperate. Don't worry my darling. I know it's hard, but you'll get used to it eventually. Never, as my little sister said, you have to seek help. I refuse to endure. My case will be different. This is the story that grandmother told me. Ah good. Okay, but we didn't do anything to anyone. We must seek help from God. I'm going like this to a pastor. I refuse to suffer this injustice. It was grandfather who sinned, not me. I refuse this injustice. The same thing is not going to happen to me, you will get your man back, and so will I, and we will each be able to get married. We are going to put an end to this circus. I'm sure God didn't have this kind of plan for us. I would be so outraged if you knew. Enough is enough. Let us break the bonds of Satan. This is what happens to us in our family pastor. And I would really like to end this. I like this holy anger with which you speak of it. This proves that you are really fed up, and this is when you level up to break the chains. But if you don't give your life to Jesus, your anger will do nothing to the demons who are ruling over you. Here are certain claims that you will not be able to make in your prayers. It is in Jesus alone that you will be able to revoke this curse. Since you want to give your life to Jesus, you can give your life to Jesus now by praying the salvation prayer. After you will take your water baptism. And then I will give you prayer points. Heavenly Father I give you my life, I confess my sins, I pray you to forgive me. Today I accept you into my life. As Lord and personal Savior, come and reign in my life. Today I become your child. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God's children. So here's what you need to know about ancestral curses. It is written in Ezekiel 18 verse 2. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. This means that when parents act or make bad decisions, it is the children who pay the curses attached to this bad choice they made. And how do these curses manage to be passed down from generation to generation? It's thanks to the blood that flows through your veins. In the blood there are codes, messages, ways, good or bad. Since you have your father's blood in you, this gives the demon the opportunity to ruin your life through the path of blood. But glory be given to Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. It is written in Galat 3 verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Which means, this curse Christ has already taken a nail to the cross, according to Colossians 2 verse 14 to 15. Which means that now being in Christ, God has become your father and your ancestor. So you are totally blessed on all sides. Are you following me, sister? Yes, pastor, I follow you perfectly. Okay, great. So you need to know that you have every right to live life abundantly. You can therefore easily chase away these demons that harm you by reminding them that you have now changed your family tree. The curses of your fathers can no longer touch you. Take the verses I quoted to you. Write them down and meditate on them, night and day. This is how your faith will become strong to revoke these curses. I will also support you in prayer from my side.
Thank you for the explanations, Pastor. I'm going to post the verses all over my bedroom. I'm going to proclaim them too. To stand in the blood of Jesus, against every ancestral curse, every word sent or declared in the universe that pursues me. I revoke you in the name of Jesus. Jesus paid all my debts. He took my curse to the cross and gave me the blessing. I declare that I am free and blessed. I break through the blood of Jesus every curse passing through the ties of blood in my life and on my descendants, because from now on I have changed my genealogical lineage, it is the blood of Jesus which now flows in my veins, and the blood of Jesus in me, speak for my freedom. This is what the Lord, Alpha and Omega, who created me, declares, it is written in Jeremiah 31 verse 29, in those days it will no longer be said, the fathers ate sour grapes and the teeth of the sons are set on edge. And I declare that that day has come, for Christ has already accomplished everything for me. Based on what the Lord has declared, I confess that I am free and blessed. My parents' curses will no longer touch me. The Lord declares in verse 30, Every man shall die for his own iniquity. Whoever eats sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. This is what the Lord declares. So I can no longer pay for the mistakes of my ancestors. I revoke any curse on my love life, any curse that prevents me from getting married and living with my husband. We revoke this curse, we reduce it to nothing with the most powerful blood. We now send fire into the places where the ancestral spirits hide. I am no longer a slave, I am a child of God. In the name of Jesus we prayed. Amen. I ask your forgiveness again for having chased you away. I am happy that everything has worked out and that we are now married in the eyes of God and men. It wasn't your fault, it was a satanic hand that caused this whole situation. It is God who is strong. I can't believe I'm getting married tomorrow. And yes finally. God is faithful. The children succeeded where we failed. If I had also thought about seeking God's help, I could have prevented my daughter from suffering the same fate as me. If you noticed the same story repeating in your family, Stand up in prayer and remind these demons, who are only liars, that you are an exception, for it is the blood of Jesus that flows through your veins. You don't have to suffer. 1 Corinthians 7:23-24 You were bought at a price? Do not become slaves of human beings. Revolt to manifest this freedom that Jesus gave you on the cross. And your freedom comes through meditating on the verses that concern your situation. Grow your faith, because faith comes by hearing. Thank you for watching. Let all ancestral curses against you be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you.